Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cry of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and prepare now to enter into our worship, let us do so as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord cried out for me to hear, Come, you scourges of the city. With that I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate which faces the north, each with a destroying weapon in his hand. In their midst was a man dressed in linen, with a writer's case at his waist. They entered and stood beside the bronze altar, then he called the man dressed in linen, with the writer's case at his waist, saying to him, Pass through the city, through Jerusalem, and mark a thou on the foreheads of those men who groan and groan over all the abominations that are practiced with it. With it. To the others I heard the Lord say, Pass through the city after him and strike. Do not look on them with pity, nor show any mercy. Old men, youths and maidens, women and children, wipe them out. But do not touch any marked with the thou. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the men, the elders, who were in front of the temple. Defile the temple, he said to them, and fill the courts with the slain. Then go out and strike in the city. Then the glory of the Lord left the threshold of the temple and rested upon the cherubim. These lifted their wings, and I saw them rise from the earth, the wheels rising along with them. They stood at the entrance at the eastern gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of God of Israel was above them. Then the cherubim lifted their wings, and the wheels went along with them, while up above them was the glory of the God of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Praise your servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord, 
above the heavens is his glory. The glory of the Lord is higher than the skies. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high, and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? The glory of the Lord. sins against you, go and tell his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, this section from chapter 18 of St. Matthew's Gospel that we hear proclaimed today uh, not only gives us a very scriptural roots for some of the processes that we have found being a part of the ecclesiastical tradition of our church for almost 2,000 years, but it also reminds us in both of these examples of how the community of the believers, uh, the church as the body of Christ, the people of God, really play an important role in understanding the communal dimension not only of our constitutive nature as disciples of Jesus, but also how we view and see everything from our liturgical life to even sometimes our pragmatic litigation of uh, canonical issues. And in this description that we hear today, we see that Jesus is reaffirming to his disciples that they are part of a community of faith. And that community of faith is really a reflection of a familial constitution in which God has chosen to not only establish the church, but in forming the church, wants it to mirror our familyhood with God. And so we are not seen as just simple individuals, each doing our own thing in the role of uh, being a disciple and certainly on the path to salvation and redemption and reconciliation, but that we are part of a larger family, and that all that we do and all that we sense and all that we are called to be must be lived out, experienced, and even reaffirmed in that type of a setting, because it impels us and helps us to recognize that God indeed is our Father, and that we are His beloved children. And just as Christ comes as the Son of God, even if we think about our understanding of the Trinity, even if we think about our whole understanding of the theology of the Incarnation and God's revelation to his people, God doesn't send an angel, God doesn't send a prophet, God doesn't send a patriarch, God doesn't send simply 
a representative or an advocate, God sends his only begotten son. And so even in the Messiah coming and in Jesus' presence, we see that extension of familial dimension. And Jesus extends that and says, not only am I the eternal Son of God, but each member of humanity, by their creation, and now we know and understand by Christ's redemption, are adopted sons and daughters through baptism of God the Father. And so when we think about that, indeed, it makes us understand that our entire focus and all that we do is lived out in that over-embracing and overarching understanding. Uh, the book of the prophet Ezekiel today sort of take, took a rest from Ezekiel for a couple of days because of the two feast days of St. Lawrence and St. Clair, which had proper readings for their feast days. But we're back to the cycle, we're back into Ezekiel. And today we see Ezekiel, of course, who's a great seer uh, as part of that prophetic dimension. Uh, he sees what I love, this, this whole understanding of uh, the city of God and all of the people and the children and the men and the women. And it says, old men, youth, maidens, women, children, all of them are part of not only sometimes redemption, but also in the Old Testament were also held accountable. But we see also this idea of the cherubim uh, and who are worshiping God and that image of sort of the wheels of fire. Sometimes if you believe in major basilicas or uh, cathedrals or even especially medieval architecture, and you'll see above the altar, usually the angels, sometimes you'll see these cherubim and seraphim depicted in it with flames running around and go, what in the world are those little baby faces? Well, it comes from this exact reading that we hear today, the description of one of Choirs of angels that Ezekiel is describing. And of course, part of the work of the angels is not only to constantly be in the presence of God, but pray in the presence of God. And the angels are complete servants of God in their total spiritual being. And so, while we are different than the angels, as you all know, nonetheless, we are called to model their fidelity to God, their tireless worship of God. And we know that, like the angels, we are called with God one day. And so all that we do as a community of faith bound together here on earth is but a prefigurement of the communion of saints in heaven and the fullness of the glory of the family of God. As, as we offer our prayers this morning, certainly you can always continue to keep our sick in, the, in, your, in our prayers daily, but I'd ask in a very special way to pray for Liz Bruce. And most of you know Liz. Liz is... Um, in the hospice right now. She's in the hospital and uh, is actively dying. So we pray that the Lord may grant these days to be ones filled with peace and comfort and assurance of his presence. And we pray for her and her family. My dear friends, let us continue to turn to the Lord this day and ask him to hear our prayers. United as the body of Christ, the church, we ask that through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we may continue to be faithful to build God's kingdom here on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may God increase in them the desire to protect life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick and dying, may they experience the power of Jesus' comfort and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, may the grace of our baptism continue to help us witness to the truth of the gospel both in word and in deed, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, and especially for all of those we've promised to remember and now bring before the Lord in the silence of our hearts today. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For James Aldridge, for whom we offer Mass today, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed, that those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may be brought to new life in him. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Heavenly Father, through the waters of baptism you have adopted us as your children. We ask that you hear and answer our prayers which we make today through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for I will be the Lord of whole church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And <laughs> Lift up your hearts. We we to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent <coughs> as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we crave by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the world is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. <coughs> Lamb of God. To take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. In the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed, save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.